Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 195 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And fuck, man, last episode, bro, that that I did that really happen? I get, I'm not going to do it this episode, or that's what I thought last episode. I thought, you know what? I'm going to address the Raid Shadow Legends thing in three minutes, and then I'm going to move on. Did I really spend 40 minutes of last episode yelling about a fucking mobile app? Dude, last episode of the podcast honestly feels like a fever dream. I don't, like, when I think about what happened last episode, I'm like, that wasn't me, and that didn't happen. That's a... That's that that would never happen, but it did happen, guys, and that's Spearhead Sundays, and I'm gonna move on. Oh, I found out they're there. I think they're gonna pay me because I sent them about 16 emails in a fucking row. So that's another win for bag chasing spears. All right, what, dude? This quarantine shit has got me fucking messed up. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. I've hit that point. Because you have to remember, I was isolating two weeks before everybody else was. So all of you fucking peasants sitting in week three, week four, dude, I'm almost two months in, baby. I've been here. So let me tell you, as the person who's been doing this shit for much longer than you, I'm the expert, okay? And let me tell you, two weeks from where you are, that's where insanity lives. And you're on your way there. Once you get... Six weeks into self-isolating and like not doing the things you normally do, you're not doing all the responsibilities, you're not going to work, you're not making money, you're not fucking seeing friends, you're not seeing family, you really start to realize how much of this shit is just made up, like in life. Oh, I have to do this, I have to, no you don't, oh I better do this otherwise I won't get money. No you don't, it's all a fucking scam. The economy's tanking, the share markets go up, it's not real. It's all made up, bro. You don't have to do nothing. I called my mum, I called my grandma, everyone else, fuck them. That's what I'm saying, guys. You're really going to find out who your real friends are during this shit because, right, no one can get anything from you. You can't do anything for anyone. That's where you find out where your friends are. When you can't do anything for someone, if they still give you a call, that's a friend. Ladies, you know, oh, does this guy want to be my friend or does he just want to fuck me? If he's not talking to you and that, talking to you now, he just wanted to fuck you. And if he's still talking to you, but you're only talking over Snapchat, he still wants to fuck you. Sorry. If you're, if you, that's a little tip. Girls, if a guy is talking to you and it's the most platonic conversation ever. How's your day? This and that. Not even a hint of flirting. Not even a fucking hint of that dude hitting on you for three weeks, months. If that man has been respectful, nice, listening to you, caring about your problems, asking you about your mum and your sister, that fucking bitch, always wearing your clothes. What's that about? Get your own clothes, you whore. Right? If that guy is talking to you and it's nice and platonic and it's all good and it's been happening for three months, if that conversation is happening on Snapchat, he might as well have sent you a fucking picture of his dick and balls because that he wants to fuck you. You don't have a platonic conversation on Snapchat. You, you want to know why it stopped using that fucking app? The only thing that's used for is sending nudes and taking pictures of your own shit and sending it to the boys going, look at what I just did. That's the only two uses for that fucking app now, right? There used to be cyberbullying, but no, that, that all gets done on TikTok, doesn't it? Dude, TikTok is a fucking hellhole of an app. I think I've worked it out though. I, I was struggling with it. I was like, I was like, oh, what I'll do is I'll just re-upload all of my stand-up clips and fucking every single one of them too offensive. TikTok takes them down. I'm like, shit, well, I can't do that. And I can't film more clips, you know, more safe clips because this fucking COVID-19 shit. You ever think about, you, you, you know, you can really tell a lot of, about someone uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to return to this fucking 
Oh, I can't wait till I get my... I almost have my real podcast set up, guys, and then I'm going to... This fucking piece of shit. Microphone. Fuck. Is this how this works? Oh, my God. Is this... Man, you can't have so much patience. One episode, I yell for 40 minutes about a fucking mobile game. The next episode, it's looking like it's going to turn into 50 minutes of me fucking with the mic. Jesus Christ, I should edit this out, but I will not. Because you know what? This is Spear... Oh, oh, almost dropped you. This is Speared Sundays, and you get what you fucking deserve. All right? How does that... Is that... Oh, my God. I'm going to fucking... All right. Done? Great. Now, if you notice, I tried to adjust it, and it's back in its original position, which didn't work for me or you, but that's where it's going to stay, right? Um, we'll, get to, we'll come back to TikTok... You can tell a lot about someone by the way they talk about this virus. You can instantly tell something about someone by what they choose to call the virus. You can tell so much about a person by what they decide to call this virus, right? If they call it coronavirus, they're just a boring, regular pleb. There's nothing special about them. If they call it coronavirus, you know, you could trust them. Hey, could you watch my bag? I'm going to go to the toilet. You can trust that person because they call it coronavirus, right? Now, if they call it COVID-19, they are either a scientist, a politician, or a conspiracy theorist who thinks Hillary Clinton actually drinks the blood of babies, for eternal life, even though that bitch looks like she's been deteriorating for the last six years, right? If they call it COVID-19, they're a doctor, a politician, or a conspiracy theorist that knows without a shadow of a doubt that the moon's made of cheese, the earth is flat, and 9-11 never happened, right? Now, there's a few other names floating around for this virus, right? If they call it the invisible enemy, They are Donald Trump because no one fucking calls it that. He's really trying to make that a thing, isn't he? And this isn't going to be some orange man bad rant. I'm just, it really shits me that Donald Trump is calling it the invisible enemy. He's like that fucking bitch in Mean Girls that kept saying fetch. That's so fetch. No one says fetch. No one says invisible enemy. No one's ever going to say that shit trying to make it a new saying. You know that's what he's trying to do. He's been pretty successful with giving names to, like, uh, his his political opponents, right? But this shit is not taking. No one's calling it the invisible enemy except for him. That's like when you try and give yourself a nickname in high school and instead of everyone using it, they just bully you. Yeah, we have to watch out for the invisible enemy. Are you going to call it the invisible enemy? Fucking loser. How good's that? I love, I love, um, I've never been very critical of him because I've always thought that he was better than all of the alternatives. And I still believe that, that he's better than all of the alternatives, except for with this. Like he's... It's almost shocked me that how, how like, he's managed to rise to every challenge. And even though he hasn't, like, uh, been, the, been presidential, you know, he hasn't had much decorum, he still managed to look like he's in control and at least... Or even if he doesn't sound like he's in control, he at least sounds very confident. But with this whole coronavirus shit, bro, he's really fumbling, isn't he? He's really sounding like a toddler with this shit. Like how he was like, bro, that was so funny. So fucking funny how he was like, uh, well, maybe we should try injecting disinfectant. Maybe we could try injecting disinfectant. You know, try that. Or, or UV virus, UV light kills the virus. So maybe we can try and get some of that light inside the body. Or maybe we can try injecting disinfectant. At a press conference, dude. That's some shit that, like, actually... And I know this is fucking... Okay, this is a little bit Orange Man bad. But I'm not... I just think it's funny. Right? I love seeing people that are, like... 
when it's like, you know, this is, this is a left or a right thing. I love seeing like figureheads of movements that for their supporters are like infallible. And uh, that's usually with things that are up for debate, you know, things like abortion, you know, if you, if you're pro it or against it, no one's exact. There's no, it's not like two plus two is four. It's a debate thing. So even if one person thinks you're wrong, another person can think you're very right for the same, you know, and, and they can both be listening to the same things and, and have completely different opinions. But when this cunt is talking about injecting disinfectant, I love seeing like millions of cunts go, oh no, my guy just said the most retarded thing that I've ever heard. I stood up for him for all the other shit he said because, uh, you know, there's a little bit in there, but fuck, even that makes me go, that is dumb, and I'm wearing the hat. I got the red hat on, and even I'm like, fuck, what an idiot. You know? It's like the, it's like the opposite of that fucking joke. The worst person ever just made a very good point. You know, it's like all of these, these people's version of the fucking pinnacle of their belief saying the dumbest shit. And it's great watching people's illusion get shattered, isn't it? Even if it is only temporarily. It's very funny. My favorite part, though, is, is, is seeing everyone watch him say the dumbest shit ever. And then trying to like find some logic in it and be like, oh no, it's, he probably just meant this. And it, you know, maybe it was just that. And he was saying it like this. And what he meant to say was that. And you know, maybe he wasn't technically talking about injecting disinfectant. Maybe he was talking about finding some kind of chemical that can kill the virus without harming the human body and then injecting that. And they like internalized it and tried to make it make sense in their own head. And then that made them feel less stupid and made them feel like they weren't supporting a guy that just said the dumbest thing ever. Uh, and then, right, they've all stood up for him and they've made reason out of his stupid sentence. And then the next day he goes, oh, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Bro, no, you weren't. Just admit you said a dumb thing. Take it like a champ. We all do it. I say dumb shit every fucking day. Way more than that, dude. I say dumb shit every fucking day. Just take that L and move on, man. It's not the end of the world. You're not a doctor, so it's fine. The amount of times I've had fucking conversations about this coronavirus shit and just said the dumbest things that have ever come out of my mouth and then someone who knows what they're talking about actually goes, well, actually, you're a fucking idiot. Here's why. And instead of me going, nah, Nah, I didn't say a dumb thing. I was just pretending to be a fucking idiot. I just go, oh, you got me. You know what you're talking about, and I don't. I'm the president. You're a doctor. I'll trust you. That's all. <laughs> so fucking funny, man. One sec. I'm going to restart the camera. And we're back, right? I love that. So funny. It's, it, you know what that was? That was fucking four people on the left... For Democrats, that was so, that must have felt so fucking good for them, because Donald Trump said some things that like, oh yeah, that's wrong, or I don't agree with that, or maybe you shouldn't have said it like that, or that was a little bit rude, right? There's plenty of those things out there, but I really do think that that injecting disinfectant thing at a fucking press conference might be the most unequivocally retarded things that I've ever seen anyone say in a public forum. I'm honestly thinking about like people saying dumb shit in front of the world. That's got to be up there, right? And I bet that must feel so good for everyone on the left to see because they've been dealing with that shit every fucking time Joe Biden gets on the mic. Hey, yo, it's Joe Biden on the mic. Where the fuck am I? 
Dude, imagine if Joe Biden was a fucking hype DJ. You know those guys that get up there spinning on the decks, you know, before the main act gets up? They're just there to hype everyone up. Yo, 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 it's Joe Biden on the decks. I got hairy legs. It's Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden on the decks. Hey, hey, Joe Biden. Black people are as cool as normal people. <laughs> oh, fuck. We got a jam here, don't we? Yo. Hey, yo, Joe Biden on the mic. Let me see you put your hands up. No, not like that. That looks like something else. And he's like at a fucking, he's at the DJ decks, but he's facing the wrong way. Yo, yo. <laughs> it's fucking Biden on the decks. And, oh, hang on, I'm facing the wrong way. Yo, it's Joe Biden on the fucking mic. Who's, who's hyped up to see your main act for this evening? Your main act for this evening. Uh... Oh fuck, who's the main act? I can't remember! Like what Trump said at that press conference is just what Joe Biden's been saying at every fucking rally he does. That cunt's senile, huh? That guy's like, like two steps from the grave. Not his body, his mind. He's one of those guys that's going to like, like his mind will die, but his body's going to live forever. <laughs> yeah. You know, what, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what Joe Biden's like? Joe Biden is the opposite of Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Joe Biden, his body works great, but his mind is in a fucking chair. Stephen Hawking, his body's fucked, but his mind worked great. Joe Biden, he's running around, he looks really fit, he looks healthy, but his brain has fallen off. He dropped it. It fell out. My brain fell out. I'm Joe Biden. So good. Dude, American politics is incredible. Australian politics is boring as fuck. Everyone's just kind of doing a good job. It sucks. You know? Like, oh, if Labour was in... Like, imagine if, if, if Labour was in, nothing would change. Like, like the Liberals are like, all right, there's a bit of a crisis going on, so we're going to listen to Labour and we're going to work together to fix it. And if Labour was in power, they're going to go, all right, let's work with the Liberals and we'll all fix it together. That is so boring. You know what I want to see? I want to see Donald Trump say one thing and then some chick with blue hair say another thing and they fight forever. That's America, you know? So good. Because America's like fucking, I say this all the time, but America is just 50 countries trying to be one country. That's what that shit is. I love that. Guys, I think that's the end of my insightful analysis of the current American political landscape. And now it's time to talk to talk about something else. Ray? No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Shadow? No, I won't be done. The fucking lit? No, it won't be done. What was I talking about before this? Oh, TikTok. <laughs> That's right, dude. I hope you guys are coping well. I'm trying to put out as much shit as I can. I got a bunch of videos coming out. I got cooking with that instructions coming soon too. If you want to support what I'm doing, Patreon's the way to do it. Cause fuck. <laughs> Well, I was I was applying for the um, the job keeper uh, government benefits for for American listeners. Um, what that is 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 when there's a global crisis and everyone's suffering. What the government does is they help, and and also um, for any New Yorkers listening, um, when you put your rubbish outside your home, a garbage man comes and picks it up, and there's no rubbish on the street ever, and you don't have rats. Just, just, I thought I'd explain. So, <laughs> oh man, there's going to be so many comments. Uh, actually, having garbage men come and pick up your rubbish is fucking socialist. 
I love that I'll say this shit and piss off a bunch of fucking right wing cunts, but then I'll also be like, I think we should all have guns. <laughs> oh. Why can't, guys, don't you think that everyone has a few good ideas instead of, you know, no one? Like one, like half the population having zero good ideas and the other half having only good ideas? What about Nazis? What about Nazis? Yeah. You're, they had some good ideas. Like? Trains. They fucking nailed it. What were the trains doing? Well, it doesn't matter what they were doing. They, they fucking nailed it. <laughs> they nailed the train system. Autistic kids everywhere were pleased. Yeah, exactly. They were always on time. They built that shit. They got it going, you know? Okay. See, she tried to get me. Well, what about Nazis? Uniforms, they looked fucking great. I mean, the swastika, not so much. Okay, okay. Hugo Boss. Okay. What about SJWs? SJWs, what have they done? That's good. Hey, they got Harvey Weinstein locked up. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, they did. That whole Me Too SJWs? shit. Yes, it was. You're okay. Yes, it was. So, that's social justice, for sure. They started off well and they ended great. It's over, ladies. Stop it. Get rid of the front fringe. Get rid of your armpit hair. It's over. You got Harvey. It's done. You're such a fucking centrist. I am. That's what I was going to say. What, I, what I'm saying, guys, is everyone except for me is wrong. <laughs> Bye. Ha. Huh. Thought she fucking got me. See that quick checkmate? I got it. Well, what about the Nazi? Boom. Hit him with the trains. <laughs> what was in him? Nothing. Oh, fuck. My desk is moving. I got one of these standing desks. It's actually high enough for me. Dude, that shit's so good. I got to pause the camera here. All right, I'm back. Man, uh, this, qu oh, this, this oh, you're a fucking cunt. You would think that I would plug my fucking laptop in before I start recording. I'm going to record for an hour, so maybe I should plug my shit in. Or am I just not going to do that? I don't think I'll, guys, I don't think I'm ever going to learn how to do anything properly. I think that's my life now. I sit down and I do the thing that I've been doing since 2012, eight years. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do it wrong. I'm going to do it incorrectly. You know that thing that I've been doing for eight years? The thing that I fucking pioneered in this goddamn country? I'm just never going to do it right, ever, in my fucking life. First cunt to do a solo podcast in this godforsaken country. Still hasn't figured out how to do it properly. That's me, Spearhead Sundays. And you listen to it. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you, moron? I'm dumb. You? You're injecting disinfectant because the president told you dumb. Ah, oh, I gotta come back here. And we're back. All right, dude, this quarantine shit, what I was saying. Oh, TikTok, that's right. <laughs> TikTok, right? I've worked out. Uh, I can't post my stand-up because we can't obviously record anymore because uh, can't do any shows, right? And the stuff that I want to put out, it's unacceptable, right, for TikTok. But what I've worked out is I c I'm not a relatable cunt. I never have been. And look, do you really want that from me? Do you really want me to be fucking doing, oh, here's a two-minute video on what it's like when this to do that. You don't want that shit from me, right? I don't do that shit. I've done it. Right? It's the best way to get started in this fucking game. If you want to start, do that shit. It's the only way to get some traction out here. Right? But I don't do it. Because I'm not very good at it. Because I'm not a relatable cunt. And that's what TikTok is. It's being relatable, bullying the mentally disabled, and being a pedophile. Now, I don't bully the disabled, and I'm not a pedophile, so, and I'm not very relatable. So I've got to make my own lane here. Now, instead of right, I've worked it out. I can take all these fucking trends on TikTok, right? And instead of doing some stupid joke about fucking, you know, my day, which is what every fucking relatable thing, isn't it weird when you do this during your day? Shut up, all right? What I can do is take all these fucking trends and all these formats that people are creating and I can put an absolutely fucked spin on it. 
chucked one up about the wage gap, went great. I'm like, oh, I'm getting this. I found video of the Royals, Prince, um, not Prince Andrew, the, not the one who fucks kids, allegedly. That's how I'm going to say allegedly for the rest of my life now, I've decided. Because in a court of law, right, you can say anything about anyone as long as you put allegedly in there, right? Allegedly, anyway. But do you have to say allegedly with a serious tone? Like, I feel like, I feel like if you say, oh, George Pell raped kids allegedly, like if you do the air quotes, I feel like if you said that in court, maybe you could get in trouble for, but he did the air quote. So obviously he's saying that allegedly is bullshit, which means he's saying that George Pell fucks kids and legally he doesn't, even though allegedly he does. See, I didn't put the quotation marks in there, right? But legally, and all of my armchair lawyers, right, I'd love for you to chime in on this. Can you say George Pell fucks children allegedly? Like, does the tone have anything to do with it? Or does it ha- do you have to say George Pell fucks kids allegedly? Or can you say George Pell has non-consensual sex with children, allegedly. Like, is that legal to say? Or do you have to say George Pell fucks kids allegedly? Because I would love for it to be legal for me to say, George Pell, who was the head of the Australian Catholic Church in Australia, has sex with children without their consent, allegedly. If that's legal, that's what I'm going to say for the rest of my life. Let me know. <laughs> oh, my desk is moving again. Fucking cunt. Moves my microwave, microwave my microphone away. Um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying, guys, is, is I've, I've cracked the TikTok code. I can't be relatable, but I can be fucked. I found footage of fucking the, the royals. What's that cunt's name? The one with the bitch who looks like a horse. Prince Charles, right? Um, and Camilla, right? I don't know. Right, I found footage of Prince Charles and Camilla coming out of their house and clapping. Did you see that fucking footage of them clapping? Like robots? Was that even real? Not the, the footage, them. Are they real humans? I've never seen such privilege in my life that when royals are asked to clap for someone that isn't them, regular common folk, they don't even know how to do a round of applause. They start, if you watch that shit, they start, they clap like this. And there's two of them and it sounds like this. Because they're doing it in time with each other. There's two cunts, they're clapping at the same time. That slowly as well, like this. There are two people. So it's not like. It's not like that. It's like this. Two cunts, four hands, one noise. What are they doing? They are that fucking privileged. They don't even know how to give someone else a round of applause. Jesus Christ. Is that how they applauded for Prince Andrew while he had sex with children? Allegedly! Bro. That's nuts, that footage. They're not real. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I just put myself next to that video and I was like, oh, I killed Jeffrey Epstein, right? And then they clapped. Funny. I can do that. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be my new goal on TikTok. I got verified early in the game, before I posted any videos, because you know I'm I'm in I'm in now. Once you get a certain amount of subscribers, you're fucking in. I got that Raid Shadow Legends bag, and I'm fucking in with TikTok. I'm verified on the Chinese spyware website. I'm fucking in, bro. I'm getting paid by by <laughs> I'm getting paid by gambling apps. And I'm selling your data to the Chinese. 
by encouraging you to follow me on TikTok. The world's fucked, isn't it? But it's either that or I'm homeless. Um, so that's one. That's that's my strat. You know, I can't. I don't think I can really get deleted off TikTok if you're verified. There's there's different rules for everyone. We all know that. So I got verified early, and then I'm like, well, I'm just going to post fucked shit. Because it doesn't matter how bad my content gets. There's still hundreds of thousands of comments abusing the mentally disabled every day on that fucking app. And I'm one notch above that. So I'm sweet. I'm not on their priority list. Could you imagine being a fucking admin at TikTok? Your whole day would just be spent banning pedophiles and deleting comments, abusing people with Down syndrome. That's your whole day. What did you do at work today? Well, I uh, blocked pedophiles from using an app for children. Did you report them to the police? No. No, I just blocked their account. Won't they just make new accounts and continue their behavior? Yes. Well, shouldn't you do something? No, we're not going to do anything about it. Why is that? Oh, well, because the app's run by China. And if, you know, white children get fucked by people, well, that's kind of the plan, isn't it? (laughs) Dude, speaking of China, you know what's nuts? They fucking... So Corona is still going, right, in China, you know? Yep, if you if you if you got a little cough, you got to line up to the doctor's office next minute. <laughs> if you have a cough in China, you got to line up for the doctor's office, and you come out the other end inside an urn. You get picked up by your family in a week, right? So that shit's all going on. Well, they've decided to open up Wuhan, right? And you know what? They reopened the fucking wet market where it started in Wuhan. The wet market has reopened. Nothing has changed. They're like, oh, should we still sell fucking rodents? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. This? <laughs> that, bro, that's like fucking, you put out half the fire. There's a giant blaze behind you. And you're like, whoa, job done. And then you just throw gasoline in front of you and flick a match at it. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. This. That's the, like, what's happening now is the worst that could happen. That's crazy, bro. China doesn't give a fuck, huh? They don't give a fuck about anything. You have to respect it. I've never, like, of all the, you really, like, in terms of alpha male countries, China's got to be number one. Like, for sure. That alpha energy is absolutely emanating from China. If, if the world was a fucking university, China is the alpha male. For sure. They fucked every single country, gave them an STD, lied about it. I don't have anything. Let me in. Came in, everyone got the disease, and then China just kept fucking. Didn't even put a condom on. That's alpha. That's not. Please don't do that. If, you, if your balls itch, go to the doctor. Maybe not now. Wait a little bit. You don't want to, especially if you're in China, you don't want to leave in an urn, you know? You don't want to go in with fucking... You have, you have a, a <laughs> doctor, my penis is all red. And the doctor's like, where? I can't. Oh, there it is. All right. Chuck him in an urn. Chinese healthcare. That's crazy. The wet market's fucking open again. Guys, I think it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end, it's the worst part of the podcast, worst part of any podcast, really. It's the uh, part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by listeners. If you have, uh, if you need some life advice, if you have a question, if you even have a fuck story you'd like to tell me, send it in to podcast at loosebeers.com. Um, where are we? Okay. Here's a little bit of a banger, perhaps, from the subject line. <clears throat> I got pregnant in quarantine. 
Hey, Lewis, long-time fan of the show. Absolutely love Spears vs. America. Thank you very much. Great quarantine viewing. LewisSpears.com slash watch. I know there's a bunch of free clips on the YouTube channel, but there's a bunch of unseen shit in Spears vs. America that uh, will never be uploaded now because I am done uploading shit from there. And if you want to support the production of future series, that's how we're funding it. All right? Um... I need some advice regarding being up the duff in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, my name is Sarah. For some context, I've been with my boyfriend for almost two years and I hate birth control. Man, fair enough, dude. I've seen birth control make jazz go insane and a bunch of other girls as well. That shit is no joke. Like it, to the point where it's like, hey, guys, maybe we should just wear a condom instead of fucking putting women through hell. It's like, yeah, man, putting on a condom's pretty uncomfortable. Meanwhile, your girlfriend on birth control is fucking pulling her hair out and stabbing dogs. Maybe that's just my girlfriend. Um, <clears throat> in January, I decided to stop taking it and just use condoms instead. Turns out my boyfriend and I both hate condoms too. Yeah, it is a fucking bitch, isn't it? Me and Jazz went through all that shit. You just got to try a bunch of different birth control. There's one that's right for you. Uh, so we recently decided to give the rhythm method a go. This is basically... Oh, fuck. Why am I even reading the method out? Obviously, that shit doesn't work. The rhythm method. Jesus Christ. What do you do? You put a metronome on, you fucker every two clicks. Click, click, bang. Um... This is a method of birth control where you track your fertility naturally and just be careful. Yeah, fuck. That's... I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm sure you're a lovely lady, but that is the dumbest shit. The second dumbest shit, because I've heard someone talk about injecting disinfectant. That is the second dumbest thing I've ever heard on this fucking show. The rhythm method. Being a student midwife, you're a midwife as well. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm sorry, I'm being harsh. Uh, I'm be it's, man, it's tough out here being horny in these difficult times. Being a student midwife, I figured this would be a piece of cake, as the title suggests. This didn't work. Literally ended up pregnant at the ripe old age of 21, four weeks after. <laughs> so you just got pregnant straight away. Oh, maybe we should try that. Straight away, pregnant. That's fucking awesome. I love that. Um, who could have seen that coming? Obviously not me. Um, anyway, I told my boyfriend and we agreed the best course of action is to get an abortion. This is a relief for me because I'm already tired of feeling sick all the time. Whoever commits to going through with the whole nine months must be insane because this is actually the worst. I've come to terms with the fact that I need to get rid of it. However, it's still kind of sad. Yesterday, I had an ultrasound and I saw its heartbeat. It's only 5.5 millimeters big at the moment. I know this hasn't really phased my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't give a fuck, does he? He wasn't planning on telling any of his friends. He just wants to move on with shit. I guess I would like a male perspective on the situation. Is he not phased because it's not growing inside him and he doesn't have to worry about having it vacuumed out? Or is he just a tiny bit callous? I worry that he's not processing the gravity of the situation and won't be there to support me afterwards. Let me know your thoughts, Sarah. Yeah, that is a very tough question. I think that that is where the pro-choice movement has gone wrong where they have tried to make the abortion thing seem like not a big deal at all, right? I'm, I'm going to preface this with I'm pro-choice, right? But I don't, I don't know. It's a really hard one for me. I don't think it's a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not a great, like it's not, oh, awesome, you got an abortion. That's amazing. You should be ha like, it's, it's not a, I feel like it's, I feel like where they've gone wrong is they've tried to make it seem like it's not a big deal. And for people who are not involved in that, it's not a big deal. You know, for example, your boyfriend. Yeah, whatever. It's not in me. It's in her. It's not a big deal. Pro-choice. Get rid of it. Whatever. Who cares? Right? But the thing is, 
obviously you care and that's normal. Um, so I don't think that you should not get it, but I do think that you need to explain to your boyfriend that this is, it's, I mean, it's not just a fuck. It's not like a flu shot where you go and you just get it done. That's a, that's a real thing. That's a real fucking thing that you're doing. And, uh, it's a big, big, scary and emotionally strong decision. Not emotionally strong, that's right. It, that decision has a lot of weight to it. So if you're going through with that, and that's your decision, it's not mine, so I'm not going to tell you either way to go, but you have to understand what you're doing, you have to think about it a lot, uh, and you have to explain to your boyfriend that it's not just a whatever. It's a big thing that you're doing, and... He needs to support you because, yeah, you're right. You know, it's like if he just thinks that it's not a big deal and then you really go through it because you might, you know, there's every possibility that you'll that you'll go through it and you that even though you you've if you've decided that it's the right thing for you and you think it's the right decision, you might go, fuck, even though that was the right thing to do, it still hurts. Which is, which is normal. <clears throat> and if he doesn't respect that level of emotion that's related to this thing, that's obviously a problem. So I would think, and this is a, I'm not qualified for this. This is a very difficult question. I would think that you just need to talk to him and explain what you're feeling why you're feeling it and then also express your concerns and say it's not a bad thing that you're not torn up over this but I'm worried that because this doesn't concern you as much as it does me that you won't respect my feelings about this do you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, if fucking, I don't know, if my girl stubs her toe, didn't hurt me at all, I don't give a fuck, but I have to give a fuck, you know? Doesn't hurt my toe, but I have to care. So even if it doesn't hit him with the emotional resonance that it's hitting you, he has to support you through it because it's your thing together. So... That's what I would say, is I would say, don't, I would say for you, don't fall into the trap of thinking that this is not a big deal, because if you fall into this thing, I was like, oh, it's just a, it's just a procedure, I'll go in, go out, and then it's done, whatever, that you won't process this properly, and then you won't be able to put it to bed. So if you're doing this thing and if you're feeling something, even though you feel like you probably shouldn't feel something because that's what everyone talks about, of like, oh, it's no big deal and whatever, it's just a fucking abortion in, out, it is a big deal. You need to be there, be present, be aware of your fucking emotions and process that so that you can move forward from it in a healthy way. Because the last thing you'd want to do is to just go in there fucking blind and think, oh, whatever, it's just a thing, and then come out the other end and be like, oh, fuck, this is actually what I was feeling, but I thought I was supposed to be feeling this, and now you've got to deal with that, that you actually feel, but you didn't give this any respect while you were going through it. Do you get what I mean? It's a very complex thing that I'm trying to explain. Basically, be aware of your own emotions and respect them and try to get your boyfriend to do the same. And you can only do that by talking to him and saying, hey, because, man, I can, I can totally relate to him. I've never been through this, but that I've, I understand, like, how I understand how I could feel that, you know, like, oh, fuck, that's happened. Bad. I don't want that. Get rid of it. And I don't want to think about it because it never should have happened. Coping mechanism, right? 
That shouldn't have happened, so I'm not going to think about it. Get rid of it. Whatever. Moving on. I could do that. Totally. Men are great at doing that. Oh, I don't want that to be happening. I'm not going to think about it. You know? So that's what I would, that's what I would say is you just need to, no, no, just have an honest conversation and listen to you because, you know, you've got two paths and they are, you can't go back. Once you pick one or the other and it looks like you're going one and you decide and that's, well, that's your choice, that's your road. Go for it. But you need to make sure that whatever road you pick is the right one. And you understand why you're doing it. You understand how you feel when you're doing it. And you have a plan to process what happens after it. Because it's a big deal. And if it's, you're saying it's not a big deal, you're lying. And you've never been through it. And neither have I. So I don't know what I'm talking about. All right? Um, online counseling, helplines, those things can all help. All right? Cool. What else did we have? Um, where are we here? Um, oh, somebody asked me about what I thought about the Louis C.K. special that came out. I know this is old. I have talked about it on the, on the Luke and Lewis show as well. But if you don't listen to that, uh, you should, um, but I'll cover it here as well. I loved it. I fucking loved it. It was so good. It was so like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to do funny. Really, really great. I felt like he addressed the whole controversy really well. He made it funny. He made some great points about consent and how he learned from it and how he can make it a, a, a moment to teach his audience. Fucking great. Really, really good. Um, and I loved it. There's kind of, I love that he did it as a digital download because that normalizes that shit. I think a lot more people are going to be doing that shit, man. I think a lot more stand-up comedians, now that we can build our own online audiences and have our fucking crowd, like you guys for me, especially those who listen to the podcast, I love that it's becoming more and more normal to build a platform because fucking network. I'm the network. You know, that's me now. I'm me. Well, not me, me and you, you guys are the network. You know, I make shit. You come to me, you watch the, you, you buy tickets and you see me live. That's how it works now. So if I get an opportunity from someone else, fucking cool. But if I don't, who cares? Because I got the connection that I've built up with you guys. That's how it works. And I fucking love that like a, a mega, mega A-list comedian like CK is doing the download stuff of like, if you want to see my stand up, you pay a small price and then you get to see it rather than worrying about going through Netflix and shit. Cause he started doing the digital download. He kind of invented that for stand up, right? I mean, I followed his model with my, with death threats don't scare me. I was like $5 digital download, make it cheap as fuck. No, DRM, no digital management shit that makes it impossible to fucking watch. Just give them the file and trust that they're not going to upload it somewhere. And to this day, no one has. And that's because we've built a great fucking network with, you know, from me to you, right? And that's what I loved about him. And then he puts all his specials on Netflix and what happens? Controversy happens. All of his shit gets pulled. His upcoming movie that was coming out, done. The moment you put your shit on someone else's platform, that's not a permanent thing. That is now in their control, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, obviously. Um, but you got to be aware that that's what happens. However, no one can take away this from me, essentially. So that's why that's what I loved about it. It just normalizes it more, makes it more normal of like, oh, if I want to see a fucking stand up show, I got to pay my five bucks and I can watch it and put it on my TV and have a great time. And if, you know, someone else puts one out, I can pick that up as well. I think it's great. Normalizes it. It's really, really, really cool. Um, and if you want to grab my comedy special, loosebeers.com slash watch. Great stand up special. I would love to be taping one this year. Fuck. But uh, unfortunately, that's up there as well. If you haven't seen it, it's fucking great. If you like my online shit, it's way, way better. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Um, consider supporting me on Patreon if you want access to Spearhead Sundays early, if you want to help with the process, if you want to support what I'm doing uh, during all of this bullshit. If, you, hey, if, you're, if you're absolutely stacking up on that job seeker payment, job keeper, job seeker, whatever you fucking got, 
and you need someone to throw the money, dude, Patreon's where, you know, stimulate my economy, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening, watching, whatever the fuck you're doing. I'll talk to you guys uh, next Sunday. Also, I'm only five episodes away from episode 200. I was going to do a live show. That's all canceled now. What do I do? We got a month. Let's figure something out. All right. Talk to you Sunday. Have a shit one.